Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. So I did a search on Amazon and uh, I was looking for a 310 by 310 build volume uh, 3D printer and I found the Sun Lu S9 Plus 310 by 310 by whatever uh, 400 build volume for 190 bucks. So, um, you know, I mean, even if the printer doesn't work, it's good for the, <laughs> it's a good price for the extrusions and the steppers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got one and I'm gonna check it out and uh, uh, give you the lowdown. Uh, came packaged pretty nicely, came in two days, super fast. And uh, you know, it has all the features of a, you know, relatively modern 3D printer. Uh, it's, it comes with a wired uh, filament dryer that plugs right in and it's controlled by the motherboard, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so this apparently has a heater and a fan in it, um, you know, or you can, I don't think you have to use it, but little bonus, uh, little bonus, uh, whatchamacallit, Teflon tube spare, uh, I'm going to put that over there, um, you know, it's a standard gantry style 3D printer, dual Dual Z axis, you know, BL touch, or, you know, whatever, a CR touch knockoff. Huh. Actual spool of sample filament that's usable. <laughs> that's pretty neat. Um, so let me get the gantry out. I mean, this comes all. Oh, wow. Really well packaged. You know, it has a filament runout sensor, it has everything. Um, this is really heavy. <laughs> you know, it has the uh, supports, the whatever the Z-axis supports. I mean, this is basically like a tricked out uh, CR-10 for less than 200 bucks. Unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, let me get this out. I think I need to cut those. So far, pretty impressed with this thing. For the price I paid, sign me up. Ah, oh, okay. So I don't want to just take it out. I probably should have left it attached. <laughs> to the base. There we go. I'm gonna check out what came with it. Bag of stuff. You know, I'm not anticipating much because, you know, for 190 bucks. All right, so it came with a bunch of giant zip strips. Um, tools. I mean, this is basically the same toolkit that came with the CR-10, just, I mean, the wrench is nicer. The uh, angle cutters are about the same. The scraper is nicer. <laughs> um, the wrenches are not nicer, not as nice. Uh, it comes with a uh, what are these? Needles, uh, USB, okay, assembly screws, one, two, five, and three. Okay, so I guess it has four over here. One, two, three, four. It comes with a sand disc, strikingly similar to what also came with my CR-10. Um, 
So, very cool. Uh, shocked with the value so far. Uh, we'll see how the printer runs. Um, if necessary, I mean, I, I, I was planning on just wiping the build that's on there, and uh, the Marlin build, and putting on my own. Um, but we'll see. Um, if, it, if it works, it works. And, and I won't necessarily need to mess with it. Uh, if it is working. I'm not so vain that I need my little logo to pop up when it starts. All right, well, I'm gonna jam that in later, but it comes with another filament guide, uh, one that screws onto the actual uh, printer uh, frame. So, not bad, uh, you know, and a power cord. Uh, oh, what else was in the package were these, uh, you know, these, uh, I guess Y-axis uh, supports or you know supports, and then a bunch of extra. I guess it's PLA. Yeah, PLA. So let's see. First step. I mean, color instructions in English. Uh, pretty impressed. Take out the. Take it all out. Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> don't uh, don't undo the zip strips until you have the printer out. Oopsie. Anyway, step two. Um, make sure you have all the stuff. I do. Uh, looks good. Step three. Cut off the plastic ties. Step four. Install fixing screws on the left side of the grant tree. Um, push the heating bed forward until you see the screw hole A, then move the gantry to be lined up with screw hole A. All right, again, I'm blown away by the value that, that this thing has. Anyway, so I'm gonna raise the gantry. They say slide that all the way forward. And these just go down. Push the heating bit until you see the screw hole A. Oh, so these are just for these side screws. Okay. There we go. Okay, wow. Okay, so I didn't even have to mess with that. It was already perfectly lined up. Um, so Hats off to the machining on that screw hole. Let's see, this one should just go right in. Oh, yeah. I wasn't even expecting it to be so well aligned. Okay, speed square. Yes. Yes. Then it says, then it says turn it over and install the other screws, but I think I can do them without turning it over. So I'm gonna put the rest of these. These are probably for doing the Z axis supports. Okay, so when I first got my enders, I <laughs> I had the biggest issue. I was like, oh no, they're broken. And it's because I didn't switch it over to 110. So I want to make sure and do that. Because it's usually still on 240 or 230. I mean, this thing is gigantic. Um, <laughs> I mean, moving it around, it's. I'm not sure if it's more cumbersome or less cumbersome than, than moving around the CR-10 just because, you know, it only has the one thing. It doesn't have the two things to move around, but 
because most of the weight in this is right here, uh, and whereas and and most of the mass or most of the body is here, uh, it's just hard and cumbersome to move it around. But um, I mean, for the most part, it is nice not having the separate uh, you know electronics box. Uh, anyway, I'm going to attach the uh, vertical supports. And to do that, I need to unscrew the bolts on the side a little bit. And get the, the bolt up a little bit. Okay. I can screw that on there. Now, I don't think you get the full 400 build volume with the Z-axis supports uh, in place, but I might be wrong. Okay, so I just insert the, fill the spool holder onto the filament spool and I'm gonna put the screw in. Let's, without further ado, what kind of hot end does this thing come with? <laughs> um, looks like an MK8. Just out of the box. I need to get my longer hex wrenches. Or hex driver. This is tedious. Alright, let's see what we got here. Hey, nice. Alright. It is one of the more modern uh, MK8 hot ends. So the Teflon tube rides inside of that. Hmm. I don't know if that's PETG printable or not. Um, huh. I will find out. So this thing checks a lot of boxes, you know, has a filament sensor, metal extruder, uh, MK8 hot end, the new style, I guess, I forget the, the whole terminology, you know, it has the, the, the build plate sensor, it has adjustable uh, belt tensioners, um, you know, pretty standard stuff. 310 by 310 so um, yeah I'm gonna turn it on and see what I think of it okay guess we're ready to start it up that's nice no knob. <laughs> Settings. Tank. Bed leveling. Nice. All the knobs are double knobs, so you can, you can tighten it up once you have it. Figure out what you like. The leveling menu. There's a little drawer over here. You can put all your stuff in. Which is pretty nice. These are for the filament dryer. All right. So this thing's been printing for about 
10 hours and uh, yeah it is um, already earned a spot <laughs> in the uh, lineup and uh, yeah I've ordered another one it is definitely um, worth it in my opinion um, at least for me it was uh, on the first one uh, a plug-and-play I basically just plugged it in hit print and uh, off it went um, so uh, we'll see on the second one which should be coming tomorrow um, hopefully it'll be the same kind of a deal and uh, I'll be able to you know update with a short uh, thanks a lot have a great time thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video uh, subscribe uh, if you didn't you know you can comment below <laughs> uh, anything I need to improve on much appreciated uh, thanks a lot have a great day and uh, definitely consider a Sunlu s9 plus